All right, guys, I am back with a brand new DC update. It has been Indiana Jones heavy in my household for the last four days, uh, but I did take a break. My daughter did have four wisdom teeth pulled. Uh, I had to spend time with family, and I took a break yesterday. So I'm going to be doing one other video today, kind of breaking down the new Indiana Jones film. But it is time for a brand new DC update, and we're going to talk about quite a few. I have a quite a few pictures to show you guys since the last time I did my DC update and we're going to talk about some interesting things that uh, do and don't bode well for the future. There's plenty to go over so let's get started. So the first photo I have here has to do with a story I talked about in a video probably two or three weeks ago where Turner Classic Movies was being completely wiped out by David Zaslav in a cost-cutting measure. And there was an emergency meeting between Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, and Paul Thomas Anderson. And this is one of the things that does bode well for the future, is that they were actually able to change David Zaslav's mind. And they are going to keep Charlie Tabesh as the head of programming at Turner Classic Movies to help preserve, you can see it says, preserve its mission of celebrating our rich history. So kudos to those guys for being able to change David Zaslav's mind. Now, only if the public could do the same thing in regards to DC. Now, here's somebody I don't talk about very much on my channel, and that's because there really isn't a whole lot of news involving Ray Fisher. But let's let's look at this, this thing here, and I'm going to talk about my feelings about Ray Fisher. So Ray Fisher says in a post, and I do it again in a heartbeat. He says, Accountability is always greater than entertainment. And it says, this is an article that was posted by Entertainment Weekly. And it says, Muhammad Ali has been portrayed by plenty of actors, most notably by Will Smith. But replacing Fisher in this role is an inspired choice. The actor best known as Victor Stone slash Cyborg in the DC Extended Universe similarly put his career on the line for speaking out about racism and alleged abuse at the hands of director Joss Whedon and executive Walter Hamada. Here are my feelings on this. I do believe there were abuses by Josh Whedon. I do believe that Walter Hamada definitely curated those and actually allowed those things to go on. And this is why he's no longer there and why nobody wants anything to do with really Josh Whedon. And I believe everything that Ray Fisher has said in the past. You've seen stuff from also Gal Gadot that talks about the horrible treatment her career was threatened and everything on the set. There was nobody, nobody was happy with this. When you had Ben Affleck talking about how horrible his, his, his experience was on those reshoots, this is what he was referring to. This was toxic. It was a toxic, a whole toxic thing going on. And Ray Fisher continues to speak out about it. And I am grateful that he's able to do so and that he will put his career second over making sure that there is accountability to what these executives and these directors actually do. Now, this is something that broke and I thought was uber interesting. Now, I have not been able to confirm this other than the few posts that I saw, but there were quite a, people, quite a few people talking about this. It says, James Gunn's producing partner, Peter Safran, will step down from his DC Films CO, CEO, his co-CEO position in 2024. He produced Fury of the Gods, Blue Beetle, and Aquaman 2, plus many other films in the DC Universe. He's, he's not new to this. Warner Brothers are anticipating a loss of $400 million on these projects, and he agreed to take the fall. I totally believe this is probably the plan from the beginning, and... It's very interesting that they're not getting rid of the guy that actually caused these movies to lose a half a billion dollars. Because you will never be able to convince me. I understand business. I am a business person myself. And you can't tell me that you announcing Henry Cavill back in Black Adam, a movie that made, you know, that had more people go see it than any of the previous like four to five DC films, started to make a profit. People were interested in Cavill coming back. And then about a month or so later, you hire James Gunn. He announces that Cavill is gone, that they're bringing in somebody new to play Superman, and that they're going to re relaunch the DCU with Superman Legacy. And you're trying to tell me that that had no impact on the box office. You are fooling yourselves. Uh, there is a direct correlation 
with that 500 mil or that half a million dollars being lost. And it is because mainly because of what James Gunn did when he took over. And that was, I'm sure the studio had him announce that, but that has got to be one of the most asinine decisions I've ever seen a studio make. And it's not Peter Safran's fault. And honestly, I believe it should be Pam Abdi and Mike DeLuca that are in charge of DC. And I wish James Gunn and Safran were both gone. All right, so a brief minute there. Warner Brothers was on fire. First time since Zaslav took over. Now, when I saw this come down, I wanted more information before I reported on it. My first initial thought on this was that they were trying to burn the lot down for insurance purposes because they were so far in debt. But it says they are on fire. At the last minute, a fire has just been reported inside the Warner Brothers studios. All personnel are being being evacuated. And in the end, it ended up being an electrical fire that they were able to put out rather quickly that did not involve the main structure. And so I originally thought this was them trying to to, to commit insurance fraud. But uh, that's how desperate they seem. And that's the perception by the general public, which is very, very interesting. All right, so this this here is going to tie into some of the things that are going to happen in the future. SAG-AFTRA is now going in, it's going to extend its strike. It's going to, it's going to continue for a while. This is for TV, theatrical, and streaming. There, this could go on for quite a while. This could end up being the longest strike that they've ever had. And a lot of it has to do with the rights here with streaming and also with AI. They want to keep AI out of it entirely. And they're not budging on anything, which is going to create, you know, keep these negotiations going on for quite a while. And the longer they go on, things are going to get pushed back. And we may never see Superman Legacy or any of those projects to begin with, especially with Warner Brothers losing a ton of money. Investors may start pulling out here shortly. But uh, let's take a look at some other things, and I'm going to trail back to part of this later. Now, this is something that I called out as soon as it was announced. I knew this was fake, and I'm going to prove it to you. Someone said, I told you guys that the Batman Beyond story was completely false after Kevin Smith stated that Batman Beyond depended on the Flash movie's success. Michael Uslan took to Instagram saying, don't believe everything you hear, going on to debunk Kevin Smith's claims. Longtime TV producer Michael Uslan calls out Kevin Smith for spreading lies about Batman Beyond and the Flash. And it was lies. This was to make everybody feel guilty to go see the film. It's another tactic by the studio. And what's crazy about this is he was never going to return. And I'm going to talk about Flash spoilers in this video and going forward. So if you haven't seen it, that's on you at this stage. Batman dies in the film. Michael Keaton's Batman is dead by the end of the film, and so is Sasha Kaye. So they couldn't continue with a Batman Beyond story. Now, had they done the original plan and go into Batgirl and the original ending with this, where you had Michael Keaton, you had you had um, Henry Cavill, you had Sasha Kaye, they were all there at the courthouse. But they changed it, cut out Gal Gadot, cut out Henry Cavill, killed off Superman or Batman and Supergirl, and what we got was Clooney instead. And for people who say that that James Gunn had nothing to do with these last four films, you are lying to yourselves. He absolutely did. He even talked about passing notes. He talked about being involved with these to, to steer it towards the DCU. So he did have a hand in all of these. Again, it, it amazes me that Peter Safran is taking the fall. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of lies being spread out there. But I'm glad he was able to come out and debunk this. So this is something I reported on in the past, and I'm going to reiterate this here, and this is going to, I'm going to end up my, my video today, I'm going to end up with some of my thoughts on what's going on. But it says, James Gunn's DCU will kickstart with already existing and established characters, including the Authority. They're already going to be out there, they're already going to exist. The Hollywood Reporter reiterates that Superman will be introduced to the DCU in which superheroes already exist, which is the opposite to Man of Steel, which is not true. See, this is one of the things that the haters out there talk about with Zack Snyder a lot, that he tried to cram too much into Batman versus Superman too fast, that we didn't establish these characters first. But now James Gunn is doing it, and all of those fans are like, yeah, great, let's have James Gunn do it. It's amazing. He's awesome. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, okay? And I think by pushing these lesser-known characters is going to create a problem. It's also going to inflate the numbers, which I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. 
Now, this is crazy. This does not bode well for Warner Brothers Discovery and is going to hurt their stock in the end, I believe. So James Gunn confirms he won't be at San Diego Comic-Con this year, more or less confirming you probably won't be seeing a DC Hall H panel this year. That's crazy. There are plenty of projects coming up, plenty of things happening. There's no reason they shouldn't be at the San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con this year. But Warner Brothers is running with its tail between its legs at this stage. They're desperate, and they're running away from everything they can, and they're hoping. They're putting all of their eggs in one basket, hoping that Superman Legacy is going to be a hit, which it won't be. But we're going to talk more about those projects coming up here in a few minutes. Now, this is something that James Gunn posted. I believe he posted this. I don't know if this is 100% true, but he posted this picture of Superman, and people are now assuming this is going to be the version of Superman we are going to get in Superman Legacy, and I sure hope not. I can understand nostalgia and wanting to do things from the past, but I don't want this costume. I do not want the early Superman costume. I want the more modern-day, current costume, stuff that people can actually uh, you know, have a connection to and nostalgia for. I don't want to see an older style costume. Now, if they're going to go based off of the New Frontier storyline, there is a possibility they could be choosing a whole different time period, which is something I'm not interested in. That would further get me off of the whole bandwagon. And I want more modern day superheroes. I don't want to see a story that takes place, you know, 50, 60 years ago. That's not what I'm interested in. So here are my final thoughts on everything that's happened since my last DC video. Warner Brothers is still not in a good place, and they're not going to be. I don't think they're doing anything to put themselves in a position where they're going to help their shares or get people into the theaters. The, the, the fan base is, is totally divided, and they're allowing that to happen. They're not doing anything to bring the fandom together, and I don't think that's ever going to happen. I, I just don't see them doing that. Now, uh, you know, here's an interesting thing. The very first project that is going to be done for DCU is this Creature Commandos cartoon, which they're actually filming right now. They've got the voice actors in the studio doing the voices. They're doing the animation. That's going to be the first thing that's released next year, and that's assuming the strike doesn't go on for too much longer. But that's the very first DCU project. Why do you think they did it first? Because they want to force people to have to watch it to understand what's going on when Superman Legacy comes out. They're going to inflate the numbers that way. They're going to say it was a great success. Creature Commandos was amazing. And the only reason it's going to have the watch factor that it's going to is because it is the first DCU project. And people are feel they're going to feel like they need to consume everything. Everything. That's a calculated decision by the studio. It's a brilliant one. But it's also one of those things because if it was not connected to the DCU, I wouldn't even watch it. And I'm not the only one. Why they're starting with Creature Commandos is just beyond me. It just does To me, it does not make any sense. Same with the Authority. These are not household names. And they're doing them because they, they're, they just, they're not going to have to spend a lot of money on well-known actors to play those characters. And they could do whatever they want. Uh, it, it, I do believe that our A-listers are going to be, you know, in the DC Universe are going to be the background characters, the ones that don't really matter. And it's a shame that they're going to be going this route. Uh, it's not something I'm interested in. Some people are going to say, change is great. Change is awesome. No, I've been reading comics my entire life. I want to see the Trinity. I want to see good films with these core characters, not a lot of these offshoot weird things that they're going to be doing. But that's, you know, and I'm not the only one. So for people to say, you know, but it's everyone, everyone has a different opinion, obviously. All right, so there's my update for the day. I do appreciate the support. We will see you on the next video.